Okay. Very basic circuitry leading up to using a multimeter, ammeter, and voltmeter. Very basic circuit. You've got elect electrons running around here going through the light bulb. Because you've got a complete circuit, current flows, and the bulb lights. I'm using one color because generally the convention is that you would use red for something coming out of the positive and black for something coming out of the negative. But just to show you one complete circuit, I'm quite happy just to go with one color. It really doesn't matter what color you use, they all just consist of a copper wire inside there anyway. The copper, the uh, plastic coating is really just for protection and maybe for indicating whether it's going coming from the positive or the negative, but it doesn't affect the current itself. Right, next thing, if I want to get some feel for how much current is flowing through there, if I turn up the voltage, I get more current going through it. If I want to quantify that, i.e. put a number on it, I need to use an ammeter. And there are two types of ammeter we can use. One is an analog form, just something like this. And the other is a digital form, in which case we'll be using the multimeter. So the analog, it's basically like trying to figure out how much water is flowing in a stream by making all the water go through that machine and then letting all the water out the far side. So if you're using an ammeter, it has got to be what we say in series. So I'm going to use one in here, and it's got to be as part of the circuit. These guys are called spade tags. I suppose because it looks something like a spade. So if I put it here and stand it up there ever so slightly, I don't have a complete circuit, so I must figure out how to complete the circuit, like so. And I want to make that as wide as possible. So if you're doing this as a student or as a teacher, try and give yourself as much space as possible. And you can see there that you've got a current flowing through it. The current you can concentrate on that, John. Why do you want it wide, sir? Why do I want it wide? How's wide? The stuff. So that the wires don't get tangled over each other. So in this case, you can see that it's one complete circuit. It does get quite messy, particularly if you have a lot of appliances, all the wires crisscross. As much as possible, give yourself enough space. So now if I turn up the current, my lamp should get brighter and my current should increase, like so. I don't know if we can see this on the tape. Uh, you can concentrate on the ammeter anyway, forget about the lamp. Okie doke. So we bring the current down. Now one of the things that can go wrong for you as a student or as a teacher using an ammeter is that if you have these wires crossed, so I'd switch the two of them here, you're still getting a current, whether you can notice that or not, because your light bulb is still lighting, but in this case you're not getting anything on the ammeter. The ammeter will only take current going in one direction. So if you're not getting a reading on your ammeter, it could be because you have an incomplete circuit. However, it could also be because the current is going in a manner in which the ammeter doesn't expect. So you can switch it here, or you can switch it back here. So there's my current again. I'm going to turn this off. Now I'm going to show you that there is no difference between the ammeter analog and the ammeter digital. So I disconnect the analog ammeter, put in the digital ammeter. Anytime using a multimeter, which in this case is our digital ammeter, the stand on this. You always put one in common, and that is the question, where do you put these? Always one in common, and the other goes into whatever you're measuring. In this case, I'm measuring current, but I have two options for current. Can you concentrate on that? I have one that says milliamps, MA, and one that says 10A. If I'm expecting a large current, I should always go with the 10A, because if, it's, if I put it into the milliamp, and my current is about one amp, it'll blow the fuse. So only Always start off with a big ampage, and then only if you're sure you've got milliamps do you go back to the small milliampage. What's nice about using this guy is in this case the current is going in a manner in which it doesn't expect, and that's indicated by the minus sign, but the size of the current is still 1.42. So if I switch these two around, I still get my 1.42 amps, 1.43 amps, and in this case the plus sign is gone. The 1.42 and 1.43 are just changed because the multimeter isn't very accurate, so it fluctuates ever so slightly. Still keeping with the ammeter, if I now go back and say, well, hang on, can I not use both types of ammeter? The answer is, the answer is, yes, yes. yes indeed. And what must I make sure about the two ammeters? If I'm using them in the circuit, that they're both in series. So again, you can imagine this to be one large stream coming into one multimeter, into the light bulb, and now coming into the other analog ammeter, which I put here. And once again, I need to complete the circuit being careful that the current is going the right way around. If I didn't get a reading, I would just switch the terminals on the ammeter. So I'm getting about 1.4 amps there, 1.4 amps there, which is more accurate? Why? Ah, 
two, two issues here. You might think it's more accurate because it's got a second decimal point, so you're accurate to two decimal places, whereas this guy here isn't. It's only accurate to one point. It's only accurate to the nearest point two of an amp. So it would suggest that the digital one is more accurate. However, Ross, always be wary of saying that something is accurate just because it's digital. Okay, there's nothing, no reason why digital should necessarily be more accurate than mechanical. While we've got the multimeter there, let's take a very quick look at how the multimeter itself works. So if you can focus on this, John, you can see here, I need a biro some description. Here, I use my thumb here. I got you. Biro is good. Thank you. What I want you to concentrate on are the two fuses. So all I did was take the back off. And when you take the back off a multimeter, there's two distinct fuses. This one is the milliamp fuse. You won't be able to concentrate inside it or focus inside it, but it's got a very tiny wire. If the current goes above 100 milliamps, that will break. Okay? And therefore, you will no longer be able to use your milliamp uh, circuitry unless you replace the fuse. The 10 amp fuse, however, is not all that noticeable at all. It took me a long time to realize where it was. And it's actually this big iron bar here. So it's not all that precise. If you get approximately more than 10 amps going through it, that's going to, measure, that's going to basically melt. So it takes a lot of current to melt that. And I reckon any time you've got 10 amps going through a circuit, chances are either it will break, or you will die, or both. So it's probably not going to be an issue. 10 amps is a serious amount of current to be going through any circuit. So that should never, ever go. If that goes, something has seriously gone wrong. Okay, but that's all there is inside it. So quite often, these guys would have to be replaced if you go above 200 milliamps. Finally then, I want to finish up with measuring voltage. In fact, let's switch this light bulb for a piece of wire, it's just normal resistor wire. So again, it's a complete circuit. Once again, I have my uh, current going in both. So I've got 0.38 there, about 0.38 there, going through a wire. You can't see the current going, but you're just using this ammeter to indicate the amount of current going through it. So to hook up a voltmeter, we have two options. We can use the analog or the digital, same as before. So I'm going to use the voltmeter there, and the voltmeter is always arranged in parallel. It's like looking at the height difference by checking the height at two different points. So I hook this in here, and again, depending on whether we're the right way around or not, it now should be obvious that it's in parallel, and I'm getting a reading of about 4.4 volts. If I had this switched the wrong way around, quite often it's a problem, you will find that the needle tries to go to the left and you get no reading on it at all. So the first thing you should always try and do is say, swap the two wires going into it. So that's my voltage. So now to do Ohm's law, all you have to do is measure the current on the ammeter. We only need one ammeter. Note the voltage on the voltmeter and then just take different readings. And as you take different readings, you'll find the current changes and the voltage changes. And eventually you plot a graph of one against the other. Finally, to finish up with then, it doesn't matter whether you use an analog voltmeter. Let me just say, what was my voltage there? It was about 4.6. If I go back to a digital voltmeter, hopefully this guy works. Uh, one always into common, which is there, and one into whatever I'm measuring, which in this case is volts. My symbol for volts is all the way over here. One into volts. One into common, turn my dial to voltage, DC volts, this direct current volts, and bring it down such that the number is over the largest, the scale is in the range at which I would expect. I'm expecting a voltage of about 4 volts, so I go up to between 2 and 20, so I set it to 20. In this case, I'm getting a reading of absolutely diddly squat, so my connection wasn't in there properly. I'm getting a reading of 3.57, it's a minus, which suggests that the leads could be in the other way around. But 3.57 volts is my voltage there, so that's my digital way of looking at it, that's my mechanical way of looking at it. And just before we finish up, it might be interesting to look at an ammeter which I've taken apart. Here we go. If you take the top off this, particularly for leaving search students, it's interesting because all it is, is your current is coming in here. It's, I turn all of this off, this out, this out. it's set up. Just like the ammeter, if you take the cover off, there's the pointer, the current goes in here, around the little coil of wire, which has got a magnet in it, and back out the other side. And as you put current in, current goes through the wire, the wire is now a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. What happens to current carrying conductor in a magnetic field? Experiences a force, and it uh, deflects, the greater the current, the greater the deflection. That's good enough for now. Thanks, John.